Many say it's unfair and unseemly for anyone to bring President Bill Clinton's sex scandals into his wife's presidential campaign. Well, are they right? Let's review the facts. That's coming up next on The Factual Feminist. During Mr. Clinton's presidency, three women came forward accusing him of sexual assault. And senior White House officials, certainly with the approval of the president and the first lady, worked aggressively to undermine the character and credibility of the accusers. Well, the three charges of assault were never resolved. Now, the Clinton scandals are back in the news, partly because Donald Trump called Mr. Clinton one of the great woman abusers of all time, and he referred to Mrs. Clinton as her husband's enabler. But there's another reason we're discussing the Clinton's past. One of the president's accusers, Juanita Broderick, sent out this tweet on January 6th. I was 35 years old when Bill Clinton, Arkansas Attorney General, raped me, and Hillary tried to silence me. I am now 73. It never goes away. Articles have now appeared in two left-of-center websites, Vox and Slate, noting that it's hard to dismiss Ms. Broderick given the new progressive consensus on believing victims. Well, the injunction to believe victims gained currency among progressives because of a potent mix of gender theory and advocacy statistics. The theory came from the legal scholar Catherine McKinnon, who taught that, quote, feminism is built on believing women's accounts of sexual use and abuse by men. And the statistics were supplied by activist researchers who claimed that women almost never lie about sexual assault. Now, those activist statistics have been shredded, but among progressives, the doctrine of sexual victim infallibility, that lived on. But if victims are infallible, then those they accuse must be presumed guilty. And this brings us back to the Clinton scandals. Now, Hillary Clinton has signed on to the progressive consensus about believing victims. Here she is in a November campaign video. There needs to be a decision in our country and on every college campus that any woman who reports an assault should be heard and believed. Now she sent a similar message via Twitter, and these words are posted on her campaign website. Now, Mrs. Clinton is right, of course, that when a woman reports a sexual assault to the police or campus authorities, of course, she, she has the right to be heard and taken seriously, treated with dignity, but she does not have the right to be believed. As we have seen in the sensationalized allegations of a, of a UVA fraternity rape and the Duke lacrosse rape and other false campus charges, women do sometimes fabricate stories of sexual abuse, not because they're women, but because they are human. And human beings sometimes lie, especially about sex. And who knows this better than Mrs. Clinton? She was a front row witness to the accusations of sexual assault against her husband. And you would think she would come away from that experience with a deep understanding of the problems with she said, he said sexual cases and a keen appreciation of the importance of the presumption of innocence in American law and even in public opinion. Why would she now endorse a principle so hostile to due process and the presumption of innocence? Well, she's endorsed the principle in order to curry political support from young progressive women who are trending toward Bernie Sanders. To turn things around, Mrs. Clinton has buddied up with Lena Dunham, posed for selfies with Kim Kardashian, sent out a Snapchat video of herself just chilling in Cedar Rapids. <laughs> and according to a feminist columnist, Jill Filipovich, who spoke to the campaign, Mrs. Clinton's new policy on sexual assault is a key part of her outreach to progressive millennial young women. But that policy, if applied to the Clintons, casts Bill as a rapist and Hillary as his enabler. And should the Clintons or their defenders try to refute the charges by noting inconsistencies in the accuser's stories, they could find themselves vilified for not believing survivors. So, are the Clinton scandals a legitimate campaign topic? The answer is yes. As a candidate for president, Ms. Clinton has signed on to the Women Have a Right to Be Believed campaign. That campaign has created a civil liberties nightmare on campus where young men are now routinely presumed to be guilty because accused and subject to rough justice in kangaroo courts. As president, Ms. Clinton would be in a position to reform those policies or make them more severe. So reporters and others would be remiss not to ask questions about her position on due process, the presumption of innocence, and how she reconciles her new policy with her life experience. Well, do you agree that Mrs. Clinton has taken positions that invite questions about her husband's sexual scandals? 
please let me know in the comments section. I plan to pay close attention to the current presidential campaign and weigh in when important gender controversies arise. And please alert me if you notice any that I might have missed. If you found this video helpful, please show your support by subscribing to the series, following me on Twitter, Facebook, and thank you for watching The Factual Feminist.